Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most brutal over the top deaths in the DCEU. <laughs> For this list, we'll be looking at the most violent demises seen in the shared universe that begin with 2013's Man of Steel. As such, major spoilers follow. Who do you think had the most brutal death scene in the DCU? Share your thoughts in the comments down below. Number 10, the board of directors, Shazam. Although Shazam is a family-friendly pseudo-Christmas comedy, the villain almost feels like he should be in a different movie. After gaining immense power from the seven deadly sins, Dr. Savannah pays a visit to the father and brother who emotionally tormented him. Ask that if you can throw me out. What? Ask the ball if you're man enough to throw me out of this room. <laughs> Let me spoil it for you. His brother actually gets off relatively easy, getting tossed through a window. Everyone else has the sins to deal with, who wastes no time tearing them apart. The PG-13 rating means this scene isn't as violent as it realistically could be, but there are still some genuinely alarming moments, like seeing the board members pressed up against the office windows, shrieking for help. Dear old dad gets the worst of it. Savannah makes him watch before sicking greed on him. Oh, Reed. You can have him. No. Number nine, Jesse Kane, Aquaman. If you're a pirate going up against a superhero, expect to meet a very swift end. I've waited a long time for this. Towards the beginning of the movie, father and son duo Jesse and David Kane lead an attack on a submarine. It isn't long before Aquaman shows up and lays the smack down on David leading Pops to step in with explosives. Despite one being effective against the hero, explosives on a submarine are obviously never a good call. After a short bout, Jesse ends up pinned underneath a torpedo with the water rushing in. When Aquaman leaves them to fend for themselves, David refuses to abandon his dad until Jesse holds up a grenade. The off-screen explosion signals the birth of Black Manta. Number eight, Zod, Man of Steel. In the entry to kick off DC's live action shared universe, Michael Shannon brought high level intensity to the role of Zod. I will find him. I will find him, Lara. I will find him! The Kryptonian general takes it upon himself to bring his people back from the brink of death by wiping out another, us. Thankfully, Soups doesn't let that happen. You're a monster, Zod. And I'm gonna stop you. In one of the most destructive superhero fights ever, the two rage through Metropolis. As Zod threatens to destroy an innocent family right in front of him, Superman does the only thing he can think of and snaps his enemy's neck with tremendous force. Yeah! Clark's turmoil over the decision is evident in Henry Cavill's performance, but it also caused debate among fans and creators over whether it was the right thing for Superman to do. Number seven, Starro, the Suicide Squad. When James Gunn entered the DCU, we knew we'd be getting something special. Without the constraints of a PG-13 rating, 
that something special was soaked in as much blood as possible. I'm a superhero! I'm a superhero! During the climax, the squad faces off against Starro the Conqueror, and it's just as over the top as a fight against the giant starfish should be. Although Starro mind controls many humans, they pale in comparison to the number of rats on the island. This city isn't yours. This city isn't ours. This city is theirs. Oh, hell. Ratcatcher 2 commands her furry allies to swarm the giant alien, creating an opening for Harley to pierce Starro's eye with her javelin. As she floats inside the eye with an army of rodents nibbling away, the music swells. It would almost be a sight to behold if it wasn't so gross. Number 6, Lois Lane, Zack Snyder's Justice League. There are some elements of certain DCU films that we might not see come to fruition due to the behind the scenes changes at Warner Brothers. One of those elements are the visions of an apocalyptic future with an evil Superman. In Zack Snyder's Justice League, the team must combat Steppenwolf and the threat of his immensely deadly master, Darkseid. In order to do so, they revive Superman, but we see that the possibility of their failure can lead to disaster. One brief scene shows Clark holding the charred remains of Lois and weeping, likely the outcome of Darkseid's Omega Beams. Although we don't see it, Joker does say she suffered. Poor Lois. How'd she suffered so? <sighs> Number five, the good guys, the Suicide Squad. Long before the Suicide Squad even knows about Starro, they have to rescue Rick Flagg after he gets captured. Or at least that's what they think they're doing. Nothing like a bloodbath to start the day. They call you peacemaker. I cherish peace with all my heart. I don't care how many men, women, and children I need to kill to get it. Under orders from Amanda Waller, our anti-heroes mount a stealthy assault to free Flag from his supposed captors. The sequence is filled with some grisly kills. Highlights include King Shark eating someone whole and Bloodsport and Peacemaker's competition over who can get the coolest kill. It's some pristine carnage, made even more hilarious when the group finds out that Flag was never in any danger. In actuality, they just murdered a whole host of freedom fighters who would have gladly aided them on their mission against those in power. Whoops. Why did my people not alert me of your arrival? We didn't see any people. Yeah, I didn't see anybody. Yeah, there's there's no one out there. Yeah, I, I turned them into my mother right. in my head and killed them. Number four. The Cow, Peacemaker. Holy cow. It is. James Gunn kept the violent absurdity going from the Suicide Squad with a series dedicated to one of its most absurd characters. Peacemaker follows the anti-hero as he works with Waller's underlings to stop an alien invasion. They eventually learn the aliens called butterflies, a gigantic bug-like monstrosity that produces their own source of food. Activate human torpedo. What? During the group's final mission, Peacemaker activates the human torpedo helmet on Adebayo's head, shooting her straight through the cow's chest. She then falls out of it, bringing lots of gross goop with her. There were already some fairly vicious death scenes throughout the show, but the insane circumstances make this one of the more memorable. Dude, you're shot. You gotta be admitted. I'm fine, seriously. All I need is a good nap. Number three, Black Mask, Birds of Prey. That was super embarrassing. <laughs> sure was. You think you can beat me? As the first movie within DC's shared universe to go for an R rating, Birds of Prey features an appropriate level of brutality. A big portion of it comes from the sadistic villain 
Ewan McGregor's black mask. Thank you. <laughs> Is that a snot bubble? Ew, gross. Oh, I've changed my mind. Peel it off. However, the most savage death in the movie is his own. After plenty of blood has already been shed, Harley Quinn catches up with Black Mask on a pier with a young Cassandra as his hostage. But the girl proves her proficiency at sleight of hand. She clips a grenade to Black Mask's waist and pulls the pin, while Harley rushes to toss him over the railing. I took your ring. My ring? Dope. It's a very quick death, but an undeniably brutal one. Number two, Sabak, Black Adam. Black Adam may not have changed the hierarchy of DC the way we were promised, but it nevertheless has some pretty awesome beatdowns, courtesy of its heroes. You know what I have to do. Beat his ass. During the climax, Black Adam learns the importance of playing well with others when he and the Justice Society take on the demon Sabat. His powers may have been outmatched if it weren't for Hawkman, who provides Adam the assist for a slam dunk. With a little wizardry, Hawkman holds the villain down while Adam sends electricity coursing through his body. He then rips him in half, the long way, with Sabak's insides consisting of pure molten lava. Tell him the man in black sent you. That could not have been a pleasant way to go. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Team 1. The Suicide Squad To say 2016 Suicide Squad disappointed fans would be putting it lightly. For those wary of the IP's second outing, the opening sequence showed the team was in good, blood-soaked hands. Amanda Waller sends two teams into Corto Maltese. The first runs into trouble when the Pete Davidson's black guard portrays them. With one blast to the face, the mayhem begins. Hey, hey, guys, whoa, we got a deal, right? Uh, uh, Waller, we're made. Uh the team does what they can, dispatching the island's military in ways befitting of supervillains but they're soon overwhelmed. <laughs> Captain Boomerang and Mongol go out in a fiery helicopter crash, while Savant gets his head blown up by Waller when he tries to flee. You are in violation of your agreement. <laughs> It's just as chaotic and violent as an R-rated Suicide Squad should be, which is to say, extremely. This is so frustrating. He just told me I have to carry this javelin for a reason, but he didn't say why. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.